In 1995, Europe was the scene of genocide. The bodies who lie here are the victims of the greatest atrocity on European soil since the Holocaust. More than 8,000 men and boys were hunted down, murdered and buried in mass graves. Their remains are still being found today. 25 years on, the survivors and eyewitnesses who speak of the genocide risk being unheard. Srebrenica je bila jako lijep grad, mali grad, ali je bio pun života, pun... To je bila jedna mala oaza. Čak je mirisala, svaka je kuća imala svoju parasu, prepunu cvijeća. Po danas da sam ostala bez ikoga, bez oba dvoje djece, bez muža. Oprostite, suza mi je izdajica, nikad ne bi to uradila, ali suza... Mogu pričati o svemu, ali kad dođe do djece da pričam o djeci, zaista mi bude tada najtež. Bosnia and Herzegovina, one of the world's great crossroads, a melting pot of cultures and identities. All eyes were on this country in 1984, as it hosted the Winter Olympic Games. Within 10 years, the world's eyes would be turned back on Bosnia but for different reasons. On the ashes of the former Yugoslavia, leaders exploiting identity politics rose to power across the region. Ultra-nationalist forces planned to create a greater Serbia filled only with ethnically pure Serbs. This meant Bosnian Muslims were cleansed from the land. Serb forces, the most powerful military in the region, swept across Bosnia sending people fleeing from villages in the north and east to concentration camps and slaughtering thousands of others. This was a battle of empire expansion portrayed as a battle of faith and ethnicity. By 1995, Bosnian Serb forces had taken nearly every village in eastern Bosnia and flushed them of Muslims. Trebrinitsa was one of only a few UN safe areas in the region and tens of thousands of refugees poured in. On July 11th, Srebrenica fell. As he entered the town, General Ratko Mladic spoke to Serb cameras. Evo nas, 11th of July 1995, Uoči još jednog velikog praznika srpskoga, poklanjamo srpskome narodu ovaj grad i napokon došao je trenutak da se posle bune protiv Dahija Turčimo osvetimo na ovom prostoru. As the Serbs moved in, women and children gathered around the UN base at Potichari. But men and boys like Hassan were worried about how the Serbs would treat them and made for the woods. In July 1995, I lost my father and my twin brother. I tried to escape from Srebrenica through the forests alongside with them, but unfortunately I am the only one who survived. It took me six days and six nights to reach Tuzla. It was a real suffering. I did not have anything to eat. I was being hunted like an animal. The few hundred Dutch peacekeepers at the base, waiting for UN backup that never came, handed over their weapons and the men and the boys to the Serbs. For those men, and the men who had tried to escape, this was the beginning of the single most horrific week of slaughter in recent history. They promised that we would not be killed and that we would be treated in the, according, according to all the Geneva Conventions. The thousands of men and boys captured were then loaded onto trucks and taken to execution sites. I noticed the rows and rows of dead bodies in front of me and I don't know when I was shot. So I just remember later that I was lying on my stomach, that I was shivering and trembling. One of the soldiers said to other to check all the bodies, but he refused. He said they are already dead and they left the place. I never could imagine that I could survive at that moment. I just waited to die because I lost so much blood. Someone was moving in front of me and uh, it was other survivor and I asked him, are you alive, are you alive? He said, yes, yes, come, come, come and untie me, please. 
we hid everywhere in the streams, in the graveyards, in destroyed houses and forests because Serb soldiers were patrolling. They collected the dead bodies and uh, put them on the vehicles and uh, they took them to the mass grave. And it was a horrific scene at that moment for me. Hassan Hasanovic, a survivor of the genocide, is one of the guides at the Memorial Center just a few miles north of Srebrenica and home to the former UN peacekeeper base. I survive to tell the story of Srebrenica genocide. It's very important that people know what happened in Srebrenica, that we educate young generations to make sure that similar thing does not happen ever again. In 2010, I took these two children and my son. My older son took two legs and my son took two legs. My little son told me that I didn't have the whole body, the right hand, the whole body. The whole body of the prost. 25 years on, the survivors of Srebrenica are still fighting to have their voices heard. The strength of survivors in sharing their stories and fighting for justice inspires us to take action. Join us at Remembering Srebrenica and pledge this year to stand up to intolerance and hatred, to raise awareness of the Bosnian genocide and to make every action matter.